So I hope that uh, you are now uh, well aware what is analytical chemistry all about. Okay, so that you are ready <laughs> uh, to discuss detail in this subject. Okay, so as you can see based on the video just now, okay, you can see that there is a stage where you have to sample. Eh? You have to sample, do the sampling. Okay, and I did mention at the beginning of this lecture that we are not going to cover sampling technique. Yeah? Unfortunately, sampling technique is not under this uh, topic because under this uh, subject, we are only focusing on instrumentation uh, analysis, yeah? techniques in chemical analysis, techniques only in chemical analysis. Yeah? So data handling, okay, for the for this first topic, we are going to discuss a very general, a very general, uh, what will be involved when you are to conduct chemical analysis. Okay, so what is involved? What are the steps when you are to conduct chemical analysis? <coughs> okay, so you have you have seen the video. Okay, uh, definitely sampling techniques is very important. Uh, as I mentioned, if you uh, uh, wrongly sample, uh, do the sampling, then the analysis is going to be uh, a lot of errors. Memang tak betul lah. Totally out. Eh? You cannot use the data. And of course, uh, samples can be sometimes complicated. Eh? It's not, uh, the samples can be ready to be analyzed by the machines or you need to do sample pre-treatment okay pre-treatment first okay so sample for example if you uh, involve taking samples of blood taking taking samples from from river water from uh, environment uh, from industry so you have taken samples but you might need to do pre-treatment because not the, not sometimes the most of the time the samples are not ready to be analyzed yet. You have to do some pre-treatment. Okay. So test the credibility of data. Okay. So you see in the uh, video just now that the scientists sit down, talk to each other. Okay. So this is the process that you need to report. You need to report or you need to plot graph. You need to do some statistical analysis of the data. <coughs> Itu yang kita akan belajar. Statistical analysis of the data that you obtain from the measurement. You need to do statistical analysis to check whether the data is credible or not whether the data is reliable or not. Dia tak boleh kata, oh yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely good to go, no. Yeah, you have to check, okay? So these are the common steps, eh? the learning outcomes of this topic. So if you have any question, just, just unmute and ask me. Yeah? So this one we have already, uh, uh, I have already shown you what is analytical chemistry. So, so it's more about science of measurement, how to measure, yeah? analyze yeah? components in sample that you are interested in. We call it analyze. Yeah? So jangan, jangan panic lah. Yeah? Jangan tak tahu nanti analyze tu apa. Analyze is the one that you are interested to measure. Okay. So analytical chemistry can be qualitative and can be quantitative. So quantitative, of course, it deals with number. How much? Qualitative is what? Like you test your uh, positive or negative. So you just test it. Yes, you are positive. So it's a yes or no. It's yes or no. It's not about how much virus, how much viral load uh, that is already in you. It's about there is there or it's not there. Okay, 
So that is qualitative. And when it comes to quantitative, we are concerned about how much. <laughs> okay, how much? So sometimes we do not need to know how much. We just need to know whether it is there or what is there or it's not there or what is actually uh, the material is. What, not how much. Yeah? So very important to, to differentiate these two. Yeah? Quantitative and qualitative analysis. <clears throat> and of course, when we do measurement, we cannot run away with units. Okay, so I think you are well aware of units since uh, primary school. Yeah, I think primary school you started to know all units about mass, about money, about time, second. Okay, so these are not something. Uh, foreign, yeah? this is something that uh, you should be familiar with, right? <coughs> and this is also something that you have come across since secondary school might be primary school. You already know about uh, kilo, mega, nano, fento, pico, okay? Okay, this are, these are something that I do not want to, to discuss because you should know by now. You should know by now if it is nano at nanometer, it should be time 10 to the 10 to minus 9 uh, uh, meter when you have nanometer. If you have nanomolar, then it is 10 to minus 9 molar. Micromole, for example, then it's 10 to minus 6 mole. So that one you have to get used. Eh? It's not the time that I teach you, okay, how to calculate micro, how to calculate nano. It's no longer in this, covered in this uh, topics. Yeah? All right, uh, okay, this one also, uh, we just skip this. Homogeneous, okay. Uh, this one, when we talk about uh, the terms, just now I mentioned about analytes. <laughs> okay, so you should know. When, when we talk about solutes, okay, solute ni bahan, bahan larut. <laughs> okay, you, when you measure the chemicals, when you measure the chemicals on analytical balance, okay, and then you dissolve it in water or organic solvent. So the, the one that you measure is called solutes. Okay, the one that you measure on analytical balance is called solutes. Okay, so solvent is the water or the, the organic solvent, the one that used to dissolve the solute. Yeah? So solution, of course, is the solution once it is ready. So the solution can be aqueous. So aqueous, usually we use water. And the terms concentration, molarity, uh, atomic weight, okay, you should know all this in, in 3010. Eh? You, uh, sorry, I, I don't remember your code, <laughs> but you have done this before. All these fundamentals, you have done this before. Probably you need to revise back on the formula. Okay, If you don't remember the formula how to calculate molar, then this is the time you check back, okay? So now, I don't know whether you have come across, there are more than molarity. So now we have molality <laughs> and normality, okay? So look at the difference. Molarity, moles of solute per liter. Molality, moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So this is the biggest difference. Yeah? Normality, number of equivalent weights of solute per liter of solution. So, okay, this is just something that you have to look at the textbook, look at the lecture notes to look at the uh, formula. So it's not complicated. It's not really complicated. Yeah? Jangan rasa macam, oh, apa benda ni banyak sangat molality, normality. Okay, as long as you can refer back to the formula. Yeah? So, molarity is moles. I hope that you have no issues with this. Yeah? Moles of a volume. Okay, so if you have molar, then the volume should be in liter. <clears throat> if you are talking about micromolar, then the volume can be in milliliter. Okay, so in analytical chemistry, Unit conversion is very important because as you know, 
chem analytical chemistry is about measurement. So of course, unit is very important. Okay, uh, parts per million. Eh? So this is the definition of parts per million. Okay, it can be gram per gram, um, mass of solute per mass of solution, or it can be mass of solute, milligram or gram, uh, in a volume of solution. Okay, so I think the best way, eh? I always uh, tell the student, the best way to know how to decide uh, PPM, which is part per, billion, part per million, or part per billion, okay? okay? This is another unit, eh? concentration unit, apart from molarity. Molarity is concentration unit. Part per million, part per billion is another concentration unit, eh? unit untuk Tunjukkan keperkataan. Eh? So usually I the best way is to memorize. <laughs> okay, okay. If it is milligram, then the volume should be liter. Then you get one ppm. Okay. If it is mass in milligram, and it is mass over mass, macam atas ni, then the mass under, okay, should be kilogram. Okay. So here, if it is mass over mass, okay, mass over mass is milligram per kilogram, then you get in PPN form. Okay, if it is mass over volume, okay, for PPM unit it should be milligram over liter. Okay, pointer, right? So this is the best way. <coughs> And there are others. Eh? Let's say the milligram now is in microgram. Okay, I'm just giving you. Let's say it is no longer milligram, it's microgram. So you need volume jabra upper. Okay, nanti tengok nanti soalan dia. Okay, sama juga. If it is part per billion, it is now smaller. So if it is mass over mass, okay, is microgram per liter. Because part per billion is minus nine. Yeah? Part per million is minus six. So part per billion is minus nine. So microgram per liter. Kalau tengok tadi ppm apa? Milligram per liter. So if you have this unit microgram per liter, it is in a form of one part per billion. Okay. Now if you want to express mass over mass, then it should be microgram per kilogram. Then you get part per billion. Okay. Buka buku. <laughs> Look at the textbook. It's at the early chapters. Tengok. Okay. You will understand. You will try. If the best, for me, the best solution is for you to memorize. Milligram per kilogram. Milliliter. Macam tadi? Milli, kalau milliliter. Milligram per liter. Then you get the in PPM. But if you want to be in PPB, it should be microgram per liter, microgram per kilogram. Okay, from here you can maneuver. Nak jadikan dia PPB, PPM pun senang. Yang penting hafal dulu uh, unit ni. Okay, kita tengok contoh. Eh. A 2.6 gram eh, of plant tissue was analyzed and found to contain 36 microgram zinc. Ya, tengok unit dia, satu microgram, satu gram. Okay. So what is the concentration of zinc in plant in PPM and in PPB? Okay. So now, okay, can someone tell me what is the analyte here? Can someone tell me what is the analyte here? 
Kita dah belajar dah analyte apa kan? Analyte ialah yang kita interested nak measure. So what is analyte here? Yes. Zing. Zing. Okay. okay. So analyte ialah zinc. Okay. Okay. So uh, the, that zinc is in plant tissue. Yeah. Okay. So kita tahu sekarang zinc ialah 3.6 microgram. And it is inside a 2.6 gram of plant tissue. So you must remember that this is the sample that we took. Yeah? We cannot just take zinc out of tissue, plant tissue. So the sample will be plant tissue. And the mass of the sample is 2.6. And now with analysis, we have done analysis and all that. We find out that the content, zinc content is 3.6 microgram. Okay, what's next? Okay, so the question is, what is the concentration of zinc in the plant in PPM and in PPB? So, you know, uh, zinc, okay, zinc is the analyte over the mass of sample, okay, ni sample, okay. So, kita dapat unit dia, kalau kita tengok lah, and then you just calculate lah, 3.6 uh, divided by 2.6, but the unit now is microgram per gram, kan? Okay, it does not suit, kalau tengok PPM tadi, it does not suit uh, milligram per kilogram. Yeah? So you have to convert, yeah? you have to convert the microgram per gram just now into uh, milligram per kilogram, baru dapat dalam PPM form. Yeah? Okay. So sekarang ni, the value you just, Divide as usual, 3.6 divided by 2.6. But you have to convert the microgram into milligram and gram into kilogram. Now that you can see that milligram per kilogram is similar to PPM unit, right? So 2.6 divided, uh, 3.6 divided by 2.6, you get 1.385. So unit pun dah cantik lah. Then you can put it as 1.385 ppm. Okay, nampak tak unit dia? Baru eh? ppm, part per minute. Ha, ni significant figure sebab kita tak belajar significant figure lagi. Significant figure ni saya nak suruh belajar sendiri je. Alright? So now, next one. If you want to express in part per billion form, ya. Yeah? Okay, senang je lah. Sebab PPM ni kita tahu is 10 to minus 6. Kalau part per billion is 10 to minus 9 just now. Eh? So, PPB dia lagi kecil daripada PPM. So, we just have to move another 3, point, 3 steps. 3. Gerakkan 3, kita akan dapat 1,400 part per billion. Okay, sebab PPB ni lagi kecil. So, kita kena darab 10 kuasa 3. Okay, kalau tak faham, tengok lagi. Example ni, banyak kali ni tak apa. And then, you should know how to convert <coughs> to PPM and from PPM to PPB. Yeah, it's not that difficult. Now, the second question. You have another sample. This time, you have serum sample. And the analyte is glucose. Okay, nampak lah. You want to analyze glucose. And the glucose is in serum sample. So the glucose content is 26.7 microgram. Okay, from the analysis that you have done, 26.7 microgram. And serum sample is 25, point, uh, 25 microliters. Okay. So calculate concentration in ppm. So lagi sekali, 26.7. So ini dia dah, dia dah uh, sama steps ya. 26.7 divide by 25 uh, microliters. Yeah. So saya, ini Dr. Saiz punya nota kat sini. So bayangkan sikit lah 26.7 microgram divide by 25.0 uh, microliters. Okay, originally. So in order to get PP, PPM, 
kena convert nampak sini kena convert jadi miligram per liter maknanya 26.7 microgram ni kena convert jadi miligram dulu okey microgram convert jadi miligram and then uh, microlit tadi microliter tadi kena convert jadi liter so di sini dah dibuatlah eh? conversion into uh, 26.7 microgram convert into milligram 25 microlit convert into liter okay so when you divide this glucose over serum sample dalam unit yang betul terus dapat dalam ppm. Okey, tengok balik. So ppm miligram per kilogram ataupun miligram per liter. Ya. Yeah. Untuk dapat dalam ppm. So ini sample uh, so apa contoh yang sangat senang lah. <laughs> Very direct. Right? Okey. There's a lot of other analysis. Uh, there's a lot of other examples in textbooks. Okay, so kalau nak pandai kena rajin. Tak boleh tak rajin. <laughs> okay, so look uh, look at examples in textbook. There's a lot of examples. Huh? All right. Okay, an aqueous solution 10 ml contains 56 ppm SO2. Okay. Calculate the molarity of the solution. So, saya simpan soalan ni untuk next week. Tolong buat eh. Tak ada jawapan, tak ada jawapan. Bagus, tak ada jawapan. <laughs> okay, everybody has to try. Now you can see there is a relation between uh, PPM dengan molarity. Okay, nampak complicated sikit kan? So, you have to look at in the textbooks what are the things that you need to do in order to solve this. Eh? Hmm. Dia ada additional information kena dapat. Eh? Tengok textbook. Eh? Please. <coughs> And this is another uh, concentration unit. Eh? Molarity. Kita tadi tahu molarity, normality, uh, PPM, PPB. But we can also express concentration in a weight percent, volume percent. <coughs> weight over volume. Okay. So weight percent is usually implied when units are absent. Okay. Biasanya kita guna ni. Kalau kita tak ada unit macam uh, kilogram ke kita guna uh, volume saja ke. Uh, okay. Kita tengok. However, okay. <coughs> kita tak nak specify dia dalam bentuk kilogram ataupun uh, liter atau microliter. So, we can use this. Yeah? Okay. So this is actually quite easy compared to PPM and PPB just now. And most of the time kita memang guna ni dululah. Contohnya kita measure 10 gram uh, sodium. 10 gram potassium kita dissolve dalam if we dissolve it in 100 uh, ml 10 gram besar sangat. 10 uh, micrograms sodium okay we dissolve it in uh, One liter of water. Okay. So kita tak nak kira unit dia. Jadi kita, kita kira the weight which is 10. Uh, and then one liter. So that will be 10%. Yeah? 10% weight over volume. Okay. We do not want to specify the uh, unit. Okay. So this sometimes used because... Uh, uh, Is this when the unit is not really important? Eh? Okay. So, ni tak ada apa. Density, specific gravity. Okay. So, this is just to 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 tell you um, the steps. Eh? Okay. So, like just now, I have shown you the 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 murder of uh, Maria Burberry. Yeah. The murder case of Maria Burberry. So now you imagine yourself, right? try to imagine yourself that you are going to be there as a forensic chemist. Okay? You are going to be, you are requested to be in the crime scene uh, site and you are as the forensic chemist. 
because they're gonna because they are other forensic they are pathologies pathologies ni dia tengok body uh, mayat tu mati bila cause of the death but in your case you are more interested in uh, samples from the body okay korek-korek uh, uh, samples dalam kuku <laughs> ambil rambut uh, stomach content apa lagi uh, whatever interests you eh? <clears throat> so you're supposed to be very meticulous in, take, in taking these samples eh? so try your best to to, to imagine that you're, you are in that area now in that uh, crime scene area uh, suit eh? fully in suit <laughs> Okay, so you need to, uh, so the first thing, uh, when I showed you just now, okay, uh, let's stop share here. Kita uh, share balik yang tadi. Ini tak nak guna ni, susah nak guna. Okay. Ah. Ini dia dia. Si hot sangat besar ini sikit. Okay, so now in you are at the crime scene area. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let me All right. So, so Mashita, eh, Mashita, you are here, fully suited <laughs> as a forensic chemist, and of course uh, the pathologist, forensic are there also, but you are now as a chemist, and you are interested to take. Uh, samples okay i would like to uh, know your opinion yeah what 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 samples are you uh, uh, will you be taking from this crime scene cerita sikit mashita um the blood sample might be from uh, the victim's fingernail uh, uh, and also sample from the victim's mouth because he might be poisoned, uh, she might be poisoned. Um, okay, I don't know anything else. <laughs> okay, so this kind of samples, because the body will be brought back to the lab. Yeah, uh, there's some, of course, you might, might be able to secure some samples. You might be able to secure some samples uh, at the crime scene, but... Um, most of the samples uh, will be uh, the body itself. Eh? The body itself will be brought back to the lab. So, so selalunya pathologist akan collect. Ah, pathologist ni doctor, medical doctor yang deal with dead bodies. Eh? So they will collect for you uh, stomach content, uh, liver, yang penting-penting lah. <laughs> uh, uh, they probably help you to scrap the 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 kuku kan? rambut, uh, whatever inside mouth, okay? Uh, finger, uh, apa lagi ya? Fingernails masih. So, but what about the environment? Okay, what about surrounding the body? What what are other samples that you think is interesting to to be taken? Okay, Enku Anyat Ardiana. What do you think? Um, probably uh, stain the cut wall too. Stain cut wall, right? Ah, uh, pastu glass dia tu. Glass. Mhm. Mm okay. All right, so there are a few things. I think that's why um, when we look at the 
uh, sampling area okay because one thing that you have you have to think about uh, banyak benda lah there's a lot of things that we have to think about one is what is the methods available at your lab okay because you do not have all the instruments in the world in your lab right <laughs> you're not going to have all the instruments available in the world will be in your lab. <laughs> and when you, when you take samples, you have to think whether it is suitable to be measured using your instrument in the lab. Okay, what do you have in the lab? What method that you can do in the lab? Okay, so you have to be very uh critical inquisitive bila tengok ni okay what what will i do what can i do okay dia tak boleh fikir uh, macam minum kopi order order kat starbucks ke order dekat dia tak boleh macam relax relax tak boleh eh? you have to be inquisitive you have to be investigative uh, dia tak ada of course there is an sop lah standard operating procedure that you will follow to to take some samples but in order to solve a problem, you have to think ahead. Okay, you have to, um, macam detective sikit lah. Uh, kena fikir, okay, nampak, nampak, macam dia ni kena poison. Nampak lah. Uh, you suspect. Okay, now you see that there is a white powder. Okay, kalau you tak fikir, you tak ambil pun. For example. Okay. And then you see pains. If you just following the standard operating procedure, it's okay to follow SOP. But you might miss very important samples. Yeah. So you so you, you have to look around. Okay, what are the possibilities? Okay, you have to take some samples. And you might need to interview uh, some of the so this is. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Berberini is found by her daughter, right, Bridget. So you might have to interview. Uh, what happened last night? If you are the last person. What was the activity last night? Okay. So you might need to look at the fridge. Kena tengok dalam peti ais ada apa. <laughs> Dia minum apa? Dia makan apa? You have to go to the bathroom. You have to go everywhere, not just around the body. You have to go because it might not be murder. It might be uh, poison, which mistakenly taken by Mrs. Uh, Burberry. Okay? So to come to conclusion, unless it is obvious, you nampak the murderer keluar lari daripada scene, kan? so it's fine now. <laughs> But now you are clueless, okay? And the, the forensic pathologist has not yet identified the cause of death, okay? So you have to take everything back, okay? Macam eh? Uh, that's why, uh, ni report lah. This is interview by the detective, okay? So the detective interview and relay the information to you that Bridget, the daughter okay was last uh, inter was the last one who interacted with mrs Burberry and what are their activities okay you can see nampak sini ada cover so the new report yang balance kena baca okay and then this is for you to fill out so you dah ambil sample and then uh, what is the objective of taking that sample and in your in your mind you already knew that you you have the method of analysis in the lab okay dah tahu dah nak buat apa dah lepas ni bila ambil tu dah tahu sample ni sesuai ke tak dan kenapa nak ambil you because you suspect that she has been poisoned for example okay you dah suspect dah so tahu bila poison ni you know you know that it's going to be ingested for example and then it's going to be dalam cawan dia minum ke dalam makanan dalam peti ais ke uh, those things that you should be uh, aware of okay sebab apa kita kena ambil cepat sebab once the 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 body has been removed 
and uh, the what they call the site, the 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 crime site has been open. <laughs> Then you, you know that a lot of people will be in and some of the samples can be contaminated. So, if you want to do it, you can't do it again. You declare contaminated and people will challenge you. People will challenge you uh, that you, uh, your, your sample is not valid because it is contaminated. So, you can't do it again. So, after two days, you can't do it again. You can't do it again. Contaminated by others. Hmm? So that's why you have to work fast. You have to be uh, investigative, inquisitive mind. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So these are what analytical chemists do. Analytical chemists do. And uh, the other thing why you need to obtain the samples as soon as possible, because some of the biological samples, it might be uh, the poison itself or any other involved, is not stable. Okay? Mungkin sehari dua je dah rosak dah. Especially biological sample is not really stable. So that's why you have to work very fast. Lepas tu, storage. As I said just now, sampling is very important. Nak ambil sample tu macam mana, nak letak dalam bekas apa. It's very important because that will determine the results that you will obtain from the measurement. Okay? Kalau tak, result nanti lari, pening kepala dan sebagainya. Okay. So who has found, who has actually uh, uh, heard about the news of uh, the, the younger brother of North Korean president being assassinated in Malaysia? Siapa tahu? Tak pernah tahu. <laughs> Masyita macam angguk je. Kan? Uh, North Korea ni tahu kan? North Korea tahu. Bukan South Korea. North Korea. Okay. Uh, president has a brother. Okay, and he is assass assassinated in Malaysia. Okay, so the case is it's a high profile case. Lah. Yeah, it's a high profile case. And you have to solve this. Imagine that you have to <laughs> uh, help to solve this case. Yeah? It's a high profile case. Yeah? So they might even very, uh, if you look at the documentary, it's very suspicious. Yeah? But they managed to uh, capture the CCTV uh, at, at the airport. His assassination happened at the airport. Uh, there are two ladies, <clears throat> two ladies actually, uh, like uh, they, what they did is, uh, <laughs> You know, muka adik, uh, the, 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 the young brother of the president of North Korea. So, and then uh, the, that guy still walking, but he's, he's actually very uh, unstable and managed to go to the clinics in the airport and died there. Okay. So, of course, when we need to take samples and we have let's say you, you have the, uh, the opportunity to look at the CCTV uh, recorded video, then you will suspect that he's being poisoned or he's being uh, uh, exposed to some chemicals. Nampak, dia kena kekok dengan muka dia. Yang lepas tu dia pingsan, hampir pingsan, tapi lepas tu mati. So imagine yourself to be in that situation. You have to quickly solve the issue, solve the problem. Uh, okay. And people, uh, of course, will interrogate you. How do you take the samples uh, to, to finally conclude that you are, uh, that he's being murdered, uh, he's being assassinated yeah, in Malaysia. <laughs> all right, so I think uh, that's all for today.
Uh, so this is how uh, my type of lecture will be. Uh, so I hope that before the lectures, you should read all the content first. Uh, in fact, that you should read uh, as much as you can uh, on general knowledge. Uh, TikTok is good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but then you should expand your your I don't know watching time, reading time to a lot more issues in Malaysia, outside Malaysia, watch documentaries, yeah? okay, so that you know more. Yeah? You can apply your uh, knowledge on this. Uh, of chemistry concept in this documentary. There are many eh, documentary, even uh, movies that involve uh, understanding on analytical chemistry. Okay, so uh, for next lecture, uh, next coming Thursday, uh, we're not going to have lab. We're going to have um, briefing. Okay, briefing online. So Thursday ni sepatutnya pukul 8. Tapi sebab briefing saja, saya akan start pukul 9 lah. Pukul 8 tu rasanya tak pasti lah. <laughs> so we will start uh, 8 o'clock, uh, sorry 9 o'clock this Thursday. So we will brief on the preparation of your <coughs> lab. Okay, I, I think that you are familiar with the lab codes, yeah? mm, goggles shoes. Uh, cuma saya nak bincangkan how are you going to uh, do the lab. Okay. Uh, how to divide you into groups as well as how are you going to do the report. Yeah, yang tu je yang saya akan brief on this Thursday. Uh, um, I think I have given you the lab manual or I have not. Tapi ramai yang dah masuk dalam uh, ramai yang dah masuk dalam tu kan? Dalam MS Team tu. Okay. Kalau tak, check the study. Okay. So, in the MS Teams. I think everybody is there. Cuma tak, you tak aktif ke tak lah. Nampak MS Teams lah. Okay. So if you are active in MS Team, you should now be able to see all this. Okay, lab material, lecture notes, tutorial. Ah, ini tak ada, ini standard kalau MS Team kosong lah ni. Okay, dah boleh tengok lah ni. Yeah. And you should be able to, under, to download lab materials. Eh? Mod, uh, apa tu? Lab manual lah. Kena baca before coming to the lab. Okay. Questions? 